If you only have a few minutes to declutter today, there is one space that's going to make the biggest impact, and that's the kitchen. I'm here with Don from The Minimal Mom and Dana from A Slob Comes Clean. They're my besties, and we're gonna show you exactly how to declutter a kitchen really fast with actually three different methods, and I'm gonna talk about why it's so important to start in this space. Before we show you exactly how to get started and how to declutter your kitchen, I wanna talk about why I think this is the most impactful space to declutter. First, it was so upsetting every time I walked into my kitchen when it was cluttered. Like it's the space that caused me the most stress, the most anxiety. I'd wake up in the morning and be greeted by stink, dirty dishes and clutter, and I'd wanna go back to bed. So I'm happier with a decluttered kitchen. So that's number one. The second thing is the time saving. We are in our kitchen multiple times a day, breakfast, lunch, dinner, snacks, I don't have to move stuff to prepare food. I don't have to clean before I can clean. So I'm saving so much time having a decluttered kitchen. Literally, I would say an hour a day minimum. But the last thing is I'm eating healthier. When my kitchen was cluttered, I would come in and the last thing I'd wanna do is make a healthy meal. I wanna just grab something quick and get the heck out. We're eating takeout, we're ordering pizza because I don't have the capacity to cook when everything's a disaster. I'm healthier, I'm happier, and I have more time and I want that for you too. So let's show you exactly how to declutter right now. I'm gonna show you why you should always start in the hidden spaces. And I'm gonna talk about how it helps me to start with the most visible stuff first. And I have one question that I think will transform your entire kitchen. I think actually starting from a really messy kitchen can be helpful because here's the truth. If it's on your counter, you probably use it. That's a really good indication of things you probably don't wanna let go of because you're using that all the time. It's the hidden stuff that's in the cabinets that you're probably not actually touching. So that's a good place to start to make room. Doing your dishes is great. It's so important. Getting rid of trash, that's going to make an impact. But tomorrow it could be a mess again. This is about moving the needle forward and making progress that is going to last. This stuff isn't coming back tomorrow. It is going to make a difference. So look in those hidden spaces and it's time to be ruthless. Here's what I do when I declutter. I tell myself, enough is enough. I'm sick and tired of being sick and tired of cleaning, and I can't keep pushing it till tomorrow me. I can't keep telling myself I'm gonna be motivated, and I'm gonna be pumped, and I'm gonna be a better human being tomorrow or this weekend, so I'm gonna to wait to do it then. Tomorrow me is my best friend, and I'm doing her a favor today. I'm making her life easier and being tough. And I'm telling myself things I don't use are leaving and stop. I am not saying, oh, I know I don't use this, but maybe I'll have a big party coming up and I'm gonna want two instead of one. The maybe tomorrow I'll be a better person, I'll have more energy, I'll do the cool things, I'll be, that's the reason I was stuck and miserable for so long. I don't put that on tomorrow me. I say today is the day I'm making a difference. Am I using these things right now in my life today? If the answer is this one's too small, I never use it, it's leaving. And I'm not allowing myself to stress about tomorrow. We know what we need to keep and what we don't. We are not letting fear and anxiety and worry and empty promises stop us from making the life that we deserve. So ruthless man, are you sick of the clutter? Me too. Get in those hidden spaces and get stuff out. I follow what I call the visibility rule when I declutter and here's why. I get overwhelmed like really, really easily. And I look at a messy space and I think, um, wait, what? And I used to spend all my time doing a little bit here and a little bit there and a little bit here. And so I had to come up with a way to prioritize what I was doing. And so I followed the visibility rule. I deal with the most visible stuff first. And unfortunately, what that means in an out of control kitchen is I got to do my dishes first. Okay. I have to do that because here's what happens. If I don't do my dishes first, 
then I spend all this time and energy working in this space and then I have nothing to show for it. And my family walks in and I'm like, notice anything different? And they don't, they don't notice anything different, okay? So that drains my decluttering energy. I've spent all this time and effort and it still looks terrible. But if I will deal with the visible stuff first, then whatever I get done, the space looks better and I'm inspired to keep decluttering again in the future. Now here's the bad news and the good news. The bad news is that if my, if my kitchen is completely out of control, it might take me a really long time to do my dishes. I might not get to the decluttering today, but there's this thing called dishes math. And here's how dishes math works. If I do my dishes, if I am really behind on my dishes and I do them today and they take a really long time, that is not actually how long it takes to do the dishes. The only way to know how long it takes to do the dishes is to do them again tomorrow before they're out of control. And tomorrow it's only gonna take me like 10 or 15 minutes, hand washing or dishwasher. It's shocking, right? That's dishes math. You can't just say, well, it took me five hours yesterday because I was five day days behind, so it would take me an hour today. That's not how it works, right? But tomorrow I'm inspired to keep working in my kitchen because my kitchen looks nice and I can see the visible improvement. And then I spend 10 minutes on dishes and then I get to real decluttering, okay? The other thing that that means is if I have something out here and I realize I don't want that thing to be out and visible. Maybe it's the kettle, maybe it's a package of Gatorades or whatever it is that I have and it's just lived there on the counter and I think, I don't want that to be there anymore. All I have to do is say, okay, where in the kitchen would I look for it first? And then I go to that space and if that space is cluttered, I say, okay, I don't want these Gatorades to live on my countertop. I want them to live here. There's no room for that there. We actually drink the Gatorades. So what can I remove in order to make the space for these Gatorades? And then something happens in my brain and my brain says, oh, you know what? I've never actually used that blender. I got it for my wedding. It has a lot of sentimental value. I think it was really expensive, but the truth is I don't use it, but I'm only able to let it go because I'm like, you know what? I don't have the space. The things I'm using, they need the space. And then I'm able to let that go. So that's how the visibility rule helps me get started and it helps me keep going in the kitchen. So something happened a couple years ago. My kitchen was already highly simplified. We called ourselves minimalists, but I decided that I was gonna take out every single thing that I wasn't currently using. In other words, I wanted to set up my kitchen to serve my current season of life. At the time we had four kids ages seven through 12, and I felt like I just couldn't stay on top of it. There was stuff everywhere people weren't putting things away, and our kids were getting to those ages where I really wanted them to be able to help more with things. And so something I've learned from Cass is that it has to be just as easy to put something away as it is to leave it out. So I needed to set up my kitchen so that it worked for my family and not just for me. So for me, that meant that every drawer and cabinet could only be about half full. So the question I want you to ask yourself is, are these things in my kitchen serving my current season of life? Not my fantasy self like Cass was talking about, not my someday self, hope to be, maybe, uh, not the things you registered for for your wedding, not the things you have in your kitchen because that's what your mom had in her kitchen, right? If you would ask this question of every single item in your kitchen, is it serving my current season? I believe that you could also begin to set up your kitchen so that is much easier for you to use and your family to use as well. And then we're gonna have less stuff sitting out on the counters, a higher chance of stuff getting put away, I'm not saying everything always gets put away in our kitchen now, but there's a higher likelihood because it's easy to see where the item goes and it's easy to put it away because we don't have to stuff shuffle and make room for it. So now we wanna take you through a few specific examples of how we apply this to items in the kitchen. Are you ready for an exercise that's so fun? We're gonna show you exactly our thought process and we all think differently when it comes to decluttering. Organization is not one size fits all. Decluttering is not either. Sometimes you have to hear different approaches for it to really like register, this is what works for me. We're gonna start with baby spoons. Here's my thought process. I'll pick up these baby spoons and I'll think, do we use baby spoons? Obviously, 
I have no babies. But then my brain possibly goes to, but what if I have a friend that comes over with a baby and how nice would it be to be able to like whip out the baby spoon? Stop. My hard rule is I do not allow myself to go down fantasy lane and tell myself how great I'll be in the future using my things. One question, do I use it now? Yes or no? If the answer is no, it's gotta go. And for me, my question, it's kind of similar to Cass, but it's, am I using this in our current season of cooking and life? Baby spoons? No. Like I said, our kids are nine through 14 now. Where my mind can sometimes go is, oh, but remember the days when they did use these? It's kind of sad now to be moving the baby spoons out of the drawer. However, me keeping the baby spoons in the drawer, not only does it not bring those days back, it doesn't even bring up happy memories because when I see them, it makes the drawer messy. I have to move stuff around to get to them. Sometimes the kids pull them out and use them for yogurt. And then I'm like, why are we using the baby spoons? Like, you know, and then we just have more dishes next to the sink. So again, if I'm setting up my kitchen to work for me and not against me, things that I'm not using in this current season of life need to go. If they're so special and they have such special memories, we would all agree they go into your memory box. And, and we talk a lot about that in depth. Um, but if they're not that special, I'm going to donate them and let somebody else at the thrift store enjoy the baby spoons. All of those things are things that absolutely make sense to me, right? Except that when I let myself go down that road, my brain spins out, right? Because I will justify anything. I love stuff. I love it for the memory reasons. I love it for all the possibilities. I have adult kids now. I don't think we're going to have any babies anytime soon, but what if, and what if my best friend's kids have babies and then wouldn't, y'all, my brain will spin out even on the right now stuff. Like I, so I have a non-emotional fact-based, instinct-based question that I ask myself, which is if I needed baby spoons, where would I look for them first? Generally for something like this that I would never go looking for, my answer is, um, and then I asked myself my second decluttering question, which is if I need a baby spoons, would it ever occur to me that I had any? And the answer is no, because that's what clears it up for me. I would never go looking for baby spoons, but if my brain has an answer to where I would look first for baby spoons, then I let myself put it there as long as there is space there. And I don't mean shoved in space. I mean accessible, functional, get toable space. So if there is space there, I can put it there. But if there's no space, then I have to say, okay, what am I gonna remove? Just like we talked about with the blender, what am I gonna remove so I can keep this baby spoon? A lot of times that is the thing that makes me realize, well, I'm not gonna remove the forks that we actually use and that somehow disappear because I have you know, young adult kids. I'm not going to get rid of those to keep a baby spoon. And that's the thing that lets me stick it in the donate box. Okay. So it's very fact and logic based to keep my brain from spinning out because I will come up with all the reasons and all the feelings and all the justifications. And this doesn't let me do that. Where would I look for it first? Would I look for it? And is there space for it there? Yeah, so good. I'm hoping you're seeing the different techniques and the different thought process and one of them is really clicking with you, but try them all. Like, how do you know what works if you don't give it a try? If you've tried to declutter and failed in the past, you're not a failure. You're not bad at decluttering. You just haven't found a system that works for you. It's time to try again. I hope you're feeling motivated. And I'm going to put links down below to Dawn and Dana's video where they talk about their space that they think you should start in that's going to have the biggest impact. And we together will do this same exercise in different spaces. And we also have an amazing course. <laughs> I'm sorry, to explain what? how we're all together in this weird <laughs> kitchen. Where are we even? With baby spoons? We're, we're in the most minimal, beautiful Airbnb together because we run this incredible course together. So we've gotten together to make more content for that course. We're always adding new valuable things to it. The Take Your House Back course is now on sale. It's open. I'm gonna put a link in the description. Absolutely check that out and we hope you join us 
as part of the Take Your House Back team. Thank you guys so much for watching. Head over and watch more decluttering videos and I'll see you guys next time. Thank you guys so much for those of you who have stayed to the end. Uh, Dana just shared a story and I want to punch a person <laughs> about um, someone who said that they don't think that we like each other. I know, right? And I've heard this before. In the Take Your House Back group, there's a lot of like, Team Dawn, Team Dana, Team Cass. There's probably mostly Team Dana. There's a lot of, and then decluttering without making a mess of it. Okay. Yeah, we do champion team. and fully explain right. very well in the course, but it's team take your house back. Yeah. Right. We're, we love each other. Should we hug? Oh, I don't, I don't think, I mean, I'm not even a huggy person, y'all. I, I, I <laughs> Dana doesn't like my cussing. I <laughs> call it. I, have I ever said anything? No, but your eyes, if I, if I talk about dicks, you get uncomfortable. <laughs> mom, don't watch this one, please. My mom's watching too. <laughs> She's fine with it. But, uh, <laughs> it's, it's, it's great. I'm, I'm becoming a better person being around what? these two. I am becoming a better person. Well, people do say that Dana and I should be praying for you. Right. And so I think we do, but they like, should you know, be. They so. do actually. But, but it's so nice. Nice. Yeah. that's so nice. The thing is, we get along and it's actually mm -hmm. awesome. It's been the coolest thing working together yes. because yes. I love that there's different perspectives, but at the end of the day, we have the exact same results and the, yeah. the end goal is the exact same. That's my favorite thing about Take Your House Back is when we first got together, I think we all thought, oh, we're all different. How's this going to work? Yeah. And then we would have a conversation about, like, your family and, you know, all these questions that we get all the time. And we'd be like, oh, we basically feel the same things. We have different methods, mm -hmm. but that's actually the value of it, right? Yes. yes. We don't yeah. always agree, but we always agree. Yes. 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 That one. Good. Okay. Yes. I agree. Yeah. I agree with that. Yeah. We all agree. <laughs> That's that. The point is, that we we love each other. We don't get, stop trying to make drama where there's no drama. Uh, <laughs> I have no patience for that. And I think we're all really proud of the Take Your House Back course. Yeah. The stories we've heard come out of it. Those of you who have felt stuck, like you just couldn't get going again, and something with the three of us coming together and working together clicked with you, you felt seen and heard and understood, and we gave you the tools. Not to mention our all-day declutters are magical. We have so, I mean, we have matching jerseys. We have matching so much fun on those. Jerseys. We're not trying to be like all salesy to you. A little it, bit we are. <laughs> a little bit. We well, uh, I, I, I'm not trying to be salesy, okay, but I sorry. genuinely think like it changes lives. Yes. There's something really special about it mm -hmm. if you're struggling to get your house under control. So, yeah. yeah. That's all. And also, one more time, dicks. <laughs> we'll see you guys next time. <laughs> really they look nice. Perky. Like very nice shape. Thank you. <laughs> I just like take them out and put them back in and I just, I just open the door to touch more. There we go. Not like a weirdo. <laughs> this isn't going on OnlyFans. <laughs> We'd make so much more money that way.